This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. I want you to keep your eye on a very important issue in the Mar-a-Lago case and the criminal prosecution of Donald Trump. It is the Trump's lawyers' attempts to reverse, through Judge Cannon, an earlier decision made in D.C. by the then chief judge of the D.C. Uh, DC Circuit Court, Judge Beryl Howell, in which she found that it was more likely than not that fraud and crime had been perpetrated by Donald Trump and or his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, who was the lead lawyer at the time of the Mar-a-Lago subpoena and search warrant issue, in which she stripped away the attorney-client privilege for Donald Trump and turned over 50 pages of single-space notes and audio memo recordings by uh, Evan Corcoran over to the over to the prosecution. Now, that was done after a secret hearing, because this was all part of the grand jury and part of the um, uh, the grand jury process. Evan Corcoran having gone into the grand jury, the issue of the attorney-client privilege having come back out to the only judge responsible for the administration of justice for the grand jury process against Donald Trump in D.C., and that is Judge Beryl Howell. She, as compared to, to Aileen Cannon, has an illustrious career as a uh, a a district court judge. She's still on the district court judge. She's revered. You know, she's been on the short list for the United States Supreme Court. She's been a judge for almost 20 years and supremely well-respected, usually by both sides of the aisle. That stands in stark, stark contrast to Aileen Cannon, who's been on the bench for less than two years, has, has got about 10 total trial days under her belt, who was never a trial attorney before this. She was only an appellate lawyer for the Department of Justice, ironically. And now, however, because she is the judge presiding over the criminal case, she's going to have an opportunity, and Donald Trump's lawyers know it, to actually have the temerity to overturn and vacate an earlier ruling by Judge Beryl Howell that found that there was a crime fraud exception and to take those 50 pages um, and give it to the prosecution of, of Evan Corcoran and his testimony. And if she reverses, which is likely, frankly, that she's going to do based on what she's done so far, past his prologue. You know, history is prologue. Based on her track record, we are going to see the reversal of Beryl Howell's decision, which means that all of the evidence that was provided from Evan Corcoran as the lawyer, right, to, to the prosecution, those 50 pages of single space notes, and I'm going to talk to you about them in a minute, and the uh, audio recordings that he made, his musings about his own client are going to be ripped away from the prosecution and worse under a concept we call fruit of the poisonous tree, because they already had evidence that they shouldn't have had, all of that evidence should be suppressed, and any evidence that came off of that evidence should be suppressed. That is the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. Now, how do I know this is going to happen? Because I've been doing this a long time, and I've been watching closely, and I'm a member of the Southern District of Florida, and I practice in courtrooms just like this one, and I've been watching closely. Now that Donald Trump's lawyers are freed up because their, their client already got convicted in New York. The New York case is over, and the other cases are stayed. The one in Georgia is stayed, pending a new motion by Fonnie Willis to unstay the case in Georgia against Donald Trump that she's filed with the appellate division. The case in front of Judge Chutkin is, uh, for the D.C. election interference case brought by the special counsel is stayed until we get the ruling probably this week from the United States Supreme Court about immunity. Um, they got a lot of time on their hands, right? Um, uh, you, you know, uh, idle time is the devil's playmate and plaything, And so they're now focused and training their sights on what they see as a favorable judge in Florida who has, who has been battling it out with the prosecution, right? Who's skeptical of the, of the prosecution. And you're getting frustration on the side of the special counsel, which is getting acted out in real time in the courtrooms every hearing. I mean, it's so bad that the prosecutors, including Jay Brad, are pounding on the table, slamming their forehead and being very uh, and acting out, if you will, in the courtroom because they're getting frustrated uh, by Judge Cannon. Now, picture this equation. Judge Cannon is going to reevaluate as if she was some sort of supra uh, trial court or some sort of appellate court, the rulings of a, of a judge she couldn't even hold a candle to in Judge Beryl Howell. She's going to reevaluate whether Evan Corcoran, the lawyer for Donald Trump, participated in a crime or fraud with Donald Trump. And that's not the first judge who has found that there is more likely than not that Donald Trump participated in a crime or fraud with one of his lawyers. Judge Carter in the Central District of California two years ago during the Jan 6 subpoena issue over uh, with John Eastman, the half-baked constitutional scholar who's been disbarred and has been indicted multiply, multiply indicted John Eastman, 
that Judge Carter also found it was more likely than not that John Eastman and 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 um, Donald Trump committed crime or fraud. Same thing. But now you've got the scary proposition that Aileen Cannon is going to look over the work of Judge Beryl Howell, Chief Judge Beryl Howell. Here's something we all know. Cheap razors are annoying. They cut you. They irritate you. And heck, they frustrate you. And don't get me started with subscription razor services. Can you say, blah? That's why you got to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover. And now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. If you're like 88% of men who experience irritation from shaving like me around my beard, you might be expecting the worst with each shave. Yet Henson users like me have seen dramatic improvements including the disappearance of ingrown hairs and razor bumps. Henson Shaving's innovation comes from an interesting analogy. Think of razor blades as diving boards. The longer the board, the more it wobbles. The micro wobbles are what lead to more nicks and cuts. Henson solves this by minimizing blade extension, addressing the root cause of bad shaves, not the blade itself, but the extension. Henson's aerospace background has enabled the creation of razors with unmatched precision. Using aerospace-grade CNC machines, they achieve a blade extension of just 0.0013 inches, less than a human hair's thickness. This incredibly precise control over the blade's position ensures a vibration-free and incredibly close shave. The Henson razor works with standard dual-edge blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. My first shave to clean up around my beard with a Henson razor was incredibly refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is exactly what you want. And the affordability factor, you simply can't beat it. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit HensonShaving.com slash LegalAF to pick the razor for you and use code LegalAF and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash legal AF and use code legal AF. Now, Evan Corcoran's notes, and we know this from the reporting at the time, and I did a number of hot takes on this. Evan Corcoran's notes are damning for Trump about willfulness, mens rea, criminal mind. Because he says that he uh, he let Donald Trump have about a week and a half in Mar-a-Lago, left to his own devices, um, with the top secret classified documents. That he had numerous conversations with with Donald Trump in which Donald Trump said, I don't want to turn over everything. They're my documents. I don't want to turn them over to the National Archive. I don't want to turn them over in response to a uh, subpoena. I don't want to turn them over and all of that. And that he was told, and this is in the notes of Evan Corcoran in 50 pages by both him and, and, uh, and Jennifer Little, another lawyer, that um, if he does not comply with the subpoena properly, that was issued through the grand jury under the auspices of Judge Beryl Howell in D.C., he could go to jail. Also, uh, Evan Corcoran reported that when he came back to, to Mar-a-Lago, having left his client with the um, the uh, illegally retained documents for a week and a half, then um, Carlos de Oliveira, who's now a co-conspirator indicted defendant, who was the maintenance worker uh, at Trump's behest, tried to influence and manage Evan Corcoran's review of the documents. So in other words, Donald Trump staged a room having taken out boxes that he had already sanitized and taken out as many top secret classified documents, national defense information as he could find, but he wasn't completely successful. He put those boxes in a room and Evan Corcoran reported in his notes that he did a 20 minute review, that's all, of like 20 or 30 boxes and still found about 38 top secret classified documents in the box. He then reports in his notes, again, with the prosecution, part of the case against Donald Trump, that Donald Trump in, in saying, well, wh- what you find? He goes, well, I'm over at the Brazilian court, a hotel around the corner, and I've got the folder. It's got 38 top secret classified documents in it. And Donald Trump said, do you really have to turn all those over? Why don't you make them disappear? And Corcoran wrote in his notes that Donald Trump pantomimed plucking out the um, the offending documents from the pile to be delivered to the uh, 
to the prosecutors who were coming through Jay Bratt to the Mar-a-Lago and just make him disappear. He said the president made, uh, the former president made a plucking sound by make him disappear and then told the story about that's wrong, about um, how Hillary Clinton handled her email server and the, and the accidental deletion of certain emails by one of the IT workers and use that as an example for Evan Corcoran to make his documents disappear. Evan Corcoran said, well, after that conversation, I then sealed up the envelope. But Evan Corcoran, of course, didn't sign the envelope that he turned over to the government. He had Christina Bob do it, which is another another element of the crime, because Christina Bob said, oh, yeah, all the classified top secret documents are in this folder, all taped up, when that wasn't true, as we know from the search warrant execution and the 30 or 40 boxes that were explored and the hundreds of top secret classified national defense information documents that were obtained. In addition to those 50-page notes with all of that damning evidence, Evan Corcoran also had video, uh, sorry, audio memos, like, you know, on his phone that he took while he was driving around musing about his client. I got to tell you, I've been doing this for 32 years. I've never taken 50 pages of single space notes in which I cast doubt on my own client, nor audio recordings where I do that too. Sure, there's attorney-client privilege, but this entire hot take is about the stripping away of the attorney-client privilege because of the crime fraud exception, which is an exception to the privilege. The privilege is held by the client, not by the attorney but it can be stripped away if they participated in a crime or fraud with their lawyers in trying to get counsel. And that's what Beryl Howell found. And now we've got Aileen Cannon, who is incompetent, who's over her skis. She's now, based on a motion that's been filed by Donald Trump's lawyers, going to reevaluate this issue. And if she reverses course, which of course is an appellate issue to take up to the 11th Circuit, she reverses court and said, no, no, I think Beryl Howell got it wrong despite the evidence that she had, despite the evidentiary hearing and Evan Corcoran's privilege, uh, Donald Trump's privilege related to Evan Corcoran should never have been taken away. And therefore, all his 50 pages and all of his uh, audio recordings should be suppressed. They should not go to the jury. And anything that came off of that fruit of the poisonous tree should also be suppressed and excluded from trial. That is what I'm worried about. And I don't want you to get lost in all these hearings and all this backlog and backup of procedural hearings and substantive hearings that, that uh, Aileen Cannon is doing in order to avoid making a real decision, in order to avoid having her appellate bosses breathe down her neck and reverse her for the third time. And that is the frustration that the prosecutors are experiencing in dealing with her. I want you to keep your eye on the ball. I want you to keep your eye on Evan Corcoran and the earlier decision by Beryl Howell to be re-examined by Aileen Cannon and the lawyers for Donald Trump know it. And they're training their sights on Aileen Cannon, who they see as the weak link, as they see as somebody who's in their, in their favor, in their pocket, somebody who is a Trump appointee who's been bending over backwards to help Donald Trump. And now that they're freed up, not having to defend anything else right now, they're training it on Mar-a-Lago, the only case with active proceedings going on right now. And we're going to continue to follow it and do x-ray and examine it right here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. Now you know why we call that podcast that four years ago, anticipating Aileen Cannon handling a Donald Trump case for criminal conviction. Wednesdays and Saturdays, join us at 8 p.m. Eastern time for our uh, YouTube version of our Legal AF podcast. We sit at the intersection of law and politics. We curate the top four or five stories there, and we bring it to you as lawyers. The only way we know how to do it in an informative way, in a way, hopefully, that you take away a lot of understanding about the intersection of law and politics. And then you can pick it up on audio podcast platforms of your choice. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legalaf. That's patreon.com slash legalaf.